today i'm going to show how to convert video to an audio using an ipad so basically extracting the audio out of a video and i'll be using ffmpeg so anyone who's done this using the command line util utilities will know the immense value which ffmpeg and peg provides but can it be done on an ipad and the answer is yes it can be done using an amazing shell known as a shell so i'll first show this website this is a really good website which is which shows a tutorial on how to do noise reduction using ffmpeg you start off with a video you use ffmpeg to strip out the audio you then use socks to convert or to remove the noise and then you can switch back the denoise to the denoised audio with the video but in this particular video i'm going to talk only about extracting the audio out of the video so let's get started i already have the a shell open and if you notice this is how it is going to look the you write ls you can see the directory structure you can write pwd to get the current location it already provides a bunch of commands like you can also do ls minus la quite a bunch of commands but if you notice the font size looks a little too small for my liking so i can go to config minus h which shows me the help for the configuration the default tends to be 13 points i'll want the font to be a little bigger so i'll set it to let's say 21 and I want it to be permanent so i'll also use the p flag right so this looks good now okay so we first want to start off with the video I'll be using a video or screen recording which I recently just used for the demo purposes. It resides in my Photos app. I'll select it, I'll share it. I will move it to save it to my files and I'll save it on my iPad in a folder known as Home with the name of, let's say, Temp, temp Video and it's saved. We come back to the shell now. We want to access this folder on the iPad if you want to manipulate this particular file. And this is not particularly trivial in a regular iPad application because of the various restrictions and sandboxing environment. But this particular shell is amazing. It allows you to use something known as a big folder. You just command, and by the way, this also had a auto tab complete. So if I click on big folder, it opens a folder which you can now get access to. You can do anything in that folder. I will go to on my iPad and click on Home and done. So if I do done, I already see the temp.mp4 which I had stored, which is amazing. Now I can basically do anything with it. Now, another thing we can do here is to set a bookmark for this particular folder. And that is going to allow you to return to this location easily within the shell itself without having to re use the uh, without having to pick folder so there is a command for this called bookmark and it takes up the current folder so i can just use home i can call it home and this has been bookmarked as home i can do show marks and if you now see there is a home with a capital h and a small h which corresponds to this particular location in my on my ipad and let's say if i were to no. so i've now again gone back to my original directory or the home directory corresponding to the a shell i can quickly just write jump form if i do an ls i am in that particular directory so it's immensely useful the way i'm planning to use this is to set the the root structure or the root directory where I, you know, within which I'll have subdirectories as I'll set a bookmark for that. And then I can just navigate it easily using the relative directory structure. Great. So we have this file now, temp.mp4. I do not remember the commands. I am going to copy the command for extracting the audio from this particular website. And so in this particular Asia implementation, the FFmpeg implementation also has an extension of WSM WebAssembly. I'm going to just 
to FF and PEC, and it again auto completes. And I'm going to just paste the remainder of the content. I only want to change the, the name of the file to temp.mp4. Again, good. We have the autocomplete, and I don't require the FF there again. This might take a bit of time, even though the file is small. It could be due to the fact that FFmpeg is not really making use of the full multi-threaded capabilities on the system, but I, I'm not sure about that. And surprisingly, what I found out when I ran this the previous time just for preparation for this video was that the audio was 35 MB, whereas the original video was around 37 MB. So clearly, there are some settings in this particular command that you could use to reduce the size of the file. And the meanwhile, I can, like, you know, I really think this shell can be a game changer because it can allow you to now almost do everything that you would have done on a regular Unix-like system. Of course, it still does not have the git command, which could be a really big deal. Okay, so we already have the file now ready. I can see in the Right, I can just run ls.lah and you see that the audio is 34 MB whereas the video is 35 MB and you can again go back to the files and there you are. So this file can now easily be played using the inbuilt audio player. So this really gives in a lot of powerful things that you can now try. For example, the next thing which I, one logical thing which I plan to try out is to just use shortcuts, a shortcut which which asks the user to pick up a video from a particular directory structure and then it automatically gives you the extracted audio or it can also just give you directly the denoised video back inherently it has to call the a shell and the good thing about a shell is that it also supports being called from the shortcuts so i'll leave that for a future video 